Oh, it's Scott Manley here with Eve or Bust episode 2. Now, this episode I'm going to do some testing of vehicles that we will hopefully be able to land on EVE and return from EVE. We're going to test near the space centre. Now, gravity on EVE is 66% higher. That means that if I can make this thing lift off using only 50% thrust, it will be a viable launch vehicle. So there we are, setting it to 50% and it does take off. So, mainsails have great power to mass ratios which is why I was thinking of using them. They, uh, they're not so great in terms of fuel efficiency, but we'll overlook that for now. We can make this thing fly and we can make it land uh, just on its engine power. However, of course, if we were to do that on EVE, we would be wasting a lot of fuel. Remember that the atmosphere of EVE is rather dense and we should probably be making use of parachutes. Also, the problem with the mainsails is they're so darn long that your legs won't touch the ground. So you need to come up with an efficient way to attach those legs. And by efficient, I mean the things that they attach to should not be extra heavy. Those girders mass 0.375, but these plates only mass 0.2, so they just fit and no more. If you just get this down here, and it was very hard to make it fit. There we go. That, uh, that will be a viable landing solution. The other thing we need to test is that if we use parachutes, will this thing be strong enough to survive the forces of landing? Specifically, when the parachutes open at 500 meters, we do not want the top half of the rocket to slow down and the bottom half to continue, uh, now detached from the rest of the rocket. That would be a fatal, <laughs> that would have fatal consequences. So we're gonna do a little parachute test here. You never can tell. These orange tanks sometimes seem nice and strong and other times they just collapse under forces pushing them. So I'm not taking anything for granted at this stage. They also have that whole overheating problem. The thing about overheating in Kerbal Space Program that people don't realize is that it's all about the number of parts rather than the size of parts. Anyway, uh, we use a little bit of fuel to land it, bring the velocity down, and we're here. And you see that there is not very much clearance under that but it is sufficient. So if you build a rocket from these, this is what you get. And uh, well, there's a nice little innovation here that I came up with. These external engines, I wanted to be running off their own fuel during launch, but during landing, I wanted them to feed fuel into the central stack. So what I did was I attached these little, uh, the tiny tanks and on top of those, or below those, I attached the 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 junior, what do you call it? <laughs> the docking port, right? So with the docking ports, you can right click on them and disable fuel flow. So this creates a valve that you can turn on and off. So during launch, these things will be able to fire their nuclear rockets and the fuel that was fueling those rockets won't disappear into the middle of my rocket in fractions of a second. Now, once we get up, we're gonna test the landing system here but we're not gonna land with these nuclear rockets. We're just gonna dump them on the surface like we would in real EVE. Um, obviously, we had a lot of paperwork for this process. Now, while I'm coming down, I uh, activate the, or reactivate the fuel pump so that we will be feeding fuel in there. And with a little bit of work, we can in fact land this whole stack. Excellent. Now, obviously, if we were doing this for real, we would have those middle stacks still entirely full of fuel, but um, this is just testing still. Also note the capsule at the bottom of the entire stack so that when we get there, we can in fact get out without having to clamber over hundreds of feet of spacecraft to get to the surface. There we go, Bill is testing it. He, he has been given the order to test this thing to destruction and he means to do it. But uh, he didn't realize that he's going to curb, and he thought he was going to Eve, obviously. <laughs> they told me I was going to Eve. <laughs> there we go. Oh, wait, I may have placed that in the... Okay, can you get on that ladder? Come on! Oh, that's that doesn't look particularly ergonomic. Come on, climb! Climb through that ladder, that ca flag. There you go. So now we can actually f try flying this thing, and now he intends to fulfill that whole testing to destruction part of the mission. So, uh, everything is set up. We have, oh, what we do need to get rid of is these extra things that are on the top. These are supposed to be added and ditched before landing. 
they are the ASAS units, the the momentum wheel units basically attached to RTGs. Those are supposed to provide control during the early part of the mission, but we would get rid of them before we actually landed on EVE. So yeah, dropping stuff. Oh, yeah, and at this point it's realized that this was an early prototype and the staging is not actually set up for asparagus staging, even although the plumbing is. Well, never mind, those parts will be destroyed, therefore he is fulfilling the requirements of his mission. Um, not really sure how to figure out which ones to jettison here. Uh, and if I jettison just one, then this thing will no doubt spin out of control. Um, yeah, let's just wait. Let's just ditch them all at once together. Uh, they're actually pulling fuel from that middle tank, incidentally. So we ditch it extra early because this is going to be the, the next stage. It's one of these, it's a ring of, uh, a ring of these little radial engines. So uh, he practices flying it. Look, there is the other target. Let's try and get close to that booster there. Come on, let's see how close we can get. Double click. No, double click. No, no, it's going to, it's, it is moving faster than a man can double click here. And let's try coming around for another pass. Let's see how close I can get to it before it crashes into the surface. I want to make sure this thing is destroyed. That's part of the mission. It says test to destruction and Bill is going to follow his mission to the letter. There we go. 270, me 270 meters away. And now it's time to actually... There we can see the shadow. Excellent! Whoa! Yeah, that must be some of those plates. Those plates really can take a lot of damage. Okay, now um, we need to find a place where we can ditch the, the spacecraft. Actually, testing to destruction probably means the testing of uh, the destruction of this capsule as well. We don't want to do that with Bill inside. Maybe we can... Maybe if we land on K2, we can just like push it off the side and destroy it and therefore fulfill the testing to destruction requirements of this mission. Okay. And a little bit of work here. Obviously running at four times normal speed and then back to normal speed. And just bring it in very careful. Okay, well, the capsule's still alive and so is Bill. Aha, okay. And there it goes. Can we push this? Can we push this down the mountain now? Yes! Yes, we will be able to fulfill our testing to destruction requirement like a good Kerbal pilot. I'm just going to roll that off the side and see what the black box thinks of it. Ha! Now we've got far enough. It will continue on its own on its last journey down the side of the mountain. Aha! Uh -huh. Hey! Bits start to explode, of course. Those are solar panels, the tank, and just the core spacecraft left. It is not the toughest vehicle, but uh, we'll see how far it actually goes before it is destroyed. And no doubt collect good data in the process. I hope you're getting the telemetry here, Kerbal Control. Okay, what does it say? Oh, it says that this is a really bad idea. You see, other than the obvious problem of Bill stranding himself on a mountaintop, uh, I was going to do just like another one-man launch, and to be honest, that's been done a million times. So people asked, are you doing a two-man? Are you doing a three-man capsule? No, in fact, I'm going to be landing four pilots on, on uh, EVE, and I will be returning them, of course, ultimately to Kerbin. This is the launch vehicle I am going to use to return them from EVE into EVE orbit. As you notice, it has wheels on it. Um, I'm not going to bring the solid boosters, that is merely part of a test rig which is bringing it into the sky so we can test the landing mechanism. Now, you can see from it, first of all, it has a pile of parachutes to help with the landing. It has a bunch of rover wheels on it, and uh, most of the engines on this are the, the tiny Rockamax and the tiny radial engines. And it's all very carefully set up, asparagus staged and everything, with... Um, Oh wow, look at that thing flying into the sky. Wow, I need that technology for my EVE launcher. Hey, what is that? Can I know? Oh, it's gone. Oh well, it probably evaporated or something, the speed it was going. Anyway, um, this thing is all set up. It's all asparagus staged. It has a lot of stages in this and it has, it took forever to get it set up right. 
But most importantly, it has wheels on it. Now, if you remember, I said one kilometre of altitude is um, like over a kilometre per second of delta V. The thing now with EVE is it's much harder to find those high altitude locations. It's, and moreover, it's much harder to land on them. So I thought, why not build a rover and then drive it there so we know exactly where we're going. So it's landed, all the wheels have broken, but that's fine because there will be Kerbals landing separately. We uh, sent Jebediah out there to check it out and to work with it. He, he, we told him to take a rover, but you know, being Jeb, he was like, no, nah, I'll just fly out there. There is, oh, bits of that left. I wonder what that is. Um, so gets in there, lands. Um, yeah, okay. Having some problem with the controls there. Uh, manages to crash into the side and therefore proves how durable it is under collision. That's Jeb being a professional at all levels. Now it's just up to him to repair all the tires. He carries re spare tires in his pockets, as you know. That's it. These spacesuits are great. They have lots of room for snacks and spare tires. Uh, that's good because there are, well, there's 12 spare tires in this thing needed. And let's now get into the seats. You see the seats in the middle there? Four of them all facing outwards so that they, none of them will uh, be surprised when somebody sneaks up behind them. It's kind of like a you know campfire with everybody sits facing their backs to the campfire, right? Anyway, uh, let's get control. We'll set control using the pod underneath it. Now let's try flying this thing. He is also under orders to test fly this thing. Um, we just told him that he's not allowed to leave the atmosphere. But first of all, we're going to go on a little drive to show that it does actually function as a rover and can function quite well. Yeah, we'll just do this at four times normal speed, of course, because it travels only about 10 meters per second, which means it's going to take some time once I get to EVE to actually land at the location. Uh, that time, of course, will be allowed... Uh, will allow the Kerbals to do other research. You see, the thing is, we only need a... We, it's easy to land things on EVE, right? You just need a couple of parachutes, and you can land very large things. So I figured, why have the lander and the launch, the return vehicle, being the same thing? So we'll have one lander go down, which will be very well equipped. It'll be a full-on laboratory on wheels that, should anything happen, they can stay in this thing until we can send another launch vehicle. It'll be self-sustaining. Then once they're ready to return, they can all jump on this thing and fly back into space. So we'll be sending two missions. Now let's actually try flying this thing. So we throttle up and got to ditch those tires. And we have liftoff, successful liftoff as well. And obviously running at slightly higher thrust than you would expect on EVE. In fact, you see that I'm slowing down just a little, but I am going upwards even at half thrust. So this will in fact lift off from the surface. It starts out lower thrust than, than it otherwise might because it, it, it just has a lot of things to do. Notice that I've attached the parachutes on the outside primarily to the things that will get ditched first. So let's see how this does. Uh, actually, yeah, we should ditch those tanks because those are gone. Now ditch those. And it does want to rotate a little, but that really is to be expected with all those struts everywhere. This is strutted to F and back, as they might say. Um, there we go. Let's, uh, we've flown out over the ocean. Let's turn this thing around and head back to the spaceport. As we know, this is Kerbal Space Program. If we are going to crash, we'd be better off crashing on dry land. And at this point, I get into trouble because I realize that Jebediah is stuck on something. And because he's on there, it does not want to rotate backwards. So, um... He really should have paused and repacked those parachutes, to be honest. But right now, he doesn't have the ability to rotate this thing around, so he's going to dive into the ground head first, unless he can come up with a solution. Now, one possibility is to eject half of the spacecraft and then use the built-in torque to rotate him around. And that works, kinda, but gosh, is it hard to actually point this thing. Oh dear, running out of altitude to get this right. Try again. Turn around. Stop. Uh, give me control. Nope, nope, nope. Too late. Gotta wait for that thing. Stop. Hey, no, no. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, well, 
I think that's us. Uh, Jebediah, I know you were a brilliant pilot and you have a great reputation, but I think there are limits to even your ability. I doubt you can escape this, but I know you will do everything in your power, Jebediah. Oh, that's good. Whoa, there he goes! Jebediah is indeed the new messiah, or something like that. Jebediah the messiah. He has, he has come back from the dead, practically. Seriously, look at him. He's loving it. Whoa. Maybe we can get some control back and he can... Maybe he'll bounce. Go on. Bounce. 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 Go on, Jebediah. You can look... Bring your bounce skills to hand. Yes. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> That's our man, Jebediah Kerman. The bounciest Kerman in the universe. And he lives. Jebediah Kerman! And with that, it is time for me to say, I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.